Yeah, it's pretty dark, gloomy day out here today at the Carbon Fusion Shop. Um, it's going to be pissing rain later today, so I'm going to say sorry in advance when I'm carving, trying to do a wood spirit, and you guys are going to hear the raindrops on this tent. So, obviously, I dug a new trough two days ago with my... My shovel here, see the shovel working? I dug that new trough, but obviously it was pissing rain so bad yesterday. And we got more coming. I hope we're not going to get floods like we got a couple years ago. But then again, that brings, brings more driftwood, but um, more wood from up the mountains. But hope that does not happen. But you can see here, it was raining so hard. The rain built a river, grabbed all the sawdust. Let me give you a bigger view here. And boom, this is all, we got a, a sawdust beaver dam in there. Yeah, that's from all the sawdust that are running down here. And look here, we got the Miss, Mississippi River. Hi, Evil Rick. Look, the water came all the way through here, all the way through here, all the way through here, and all the way out back. Thank, thank heavens, the farmer uh, got his back hoeing or his excavator, little excavator, and built a trench back there for me so that the water doesn't flood in here. So this is a piece of driftwood I found on the beach the other day, two days ago, I believe. I saw so I got, so, okay, slow down, Jordy. This piece, this piece is the top of this piece. Right down there. That would be the top, down here. This is another piece that I found. Both first growth western red cedar, okay? I asked what I should carve on this, if I should carve a wood spirit, and everybody said yes. A uh, uh, regular speed, full time, like a regular speed wood spirit. I'm not going to speed it up. I'm not going to do much editing. This video might be two hours. I'm going to be taking my time. All right. Now, here's the battery saws that I got. One two, three. This, this is a still MSA 140. All right. This is now the older model. This is also a still MSA 140 C. Sorry. Still MSA 140 C. MSA 140 C. The new model of that steel MSA 140C is the MSA 70, okay? This was sent to me by a subscriber and a good friend. His name's Chris. I call him Chris Mr. Birdhouse. He bought this and he sent it to me as a gift. Thank you, Chris. I can never thank you enough for all the support that you've given me. So I promise that I'm going to use this battery saw, one of these batteries, so I'm going to use this one now. If you look at this saw, let's see how we can put them by each other to compare them. The new still M, so okay, before I go ahead, so any of you thinking about getting this battery saw, it's nice, it's light. This, I think they're the same thing. The old, this thing has a little bit like, if you look at the back handle here, like look right here, then you look right here, that's different. This one's like more futuristic. This one has speed control. The new one has speed control. This does not have speed control, okay? This has speed control. This MSA 70C takes the same batteries. See, here's a, this one's, so here's the battery. Boom, we can plop it into this. So it takes the old batteries. This is the AK30. I have three of these batteries, I believe. So this video is basically for the homeowner that can't run loud chainsaws in your backyard. 
if it gets super cold, it's not cold, but if it gets super cold in here today, I'll close the tent, turn on my heater, where it is, right there, boom, ha! So this is, it's not loud like the gas chainsaws. It does not give off smoke like the gas chainsaws. You do not run any gas like the, the gas chainsaws. But if you're going to get it, so long story short, if you're thinking about getting a battery chainsaw like one of these MSA 140, don't get this. Order this one. These are still in the shops, okay? So if you go to your local steel dealer and you look for this battery saw, this MSA one, there's a good chance this MSA 140C is still in their, in their shop and they don't have this yet. Lots of steel dealers don't even know about this saw yet. Okay, but it's out. So if you're going to buy this one, say, well, do I get a deal? Because this one's now, this one's now the old one and the new one is the MSA 70. Okay, so order the MSA 170. Sorry, not 170, the MSA 70. Now, when you buy this saw, or when you buy this saw, the old one, or the new one, you do not need to change the sprocket to put a carving bar on here, okay? This carving bar, these are two 8-inch cannon bars, okay? Both dime tip. I run the dime tips on the battery saw because I don't blow them out. I can't run the dime tips on my gas saws because they always seem to blow them out or melt them. This is what I suggest you do for the very beginner. That chain is way too loose. You order the MSA 70C. You order this saw. Here's proof. Here it is. You order a steel carving bar. Okay. You do not need to change the sprocket in here. It's already quarter pitch. This carving bar in this chain is quarter pitch. Okay. So all you need to do is order the saw. You're, the steel place that you go to might not even know about steel carving bars. Okay. They might not even know. The place why I started going to in my town, they didn't know. I had to learn with them. So here's a steel carving bar. You order you order the saw, you order the carving bar, and order a couple chains. Now here's another thing. These chains. Um, how can I show you? There's two different types of chains, okay? They're both quarter pitch, so you might want to write this down, okay? You order the saw. You order the 12-inch steel carving bar, okay? That's all you need to order and two chains. Now, one of these chains, this chain where I'm, I can't get any closer, this chain right here is thinner than this chain. This chain is 043 gauge, okay? This, the bigger chain is 050 gauge. So again, the shorter chain is 043 the thicker chain is 050 all right now i can't i like carving with the thicker chain this thing needs to be sharpened like crazy i i like to carve i like carving with the 50 gauge chain because you can use the tip and you can cur scoop things out it's harder to do when you do this this chain cuts nicer through the wood it slices through the wood a lot easier cuz it's thinner but it's kind of hard, harder to use the tip of it to scoop your eyes out on your wood spirit or whatever. So, okay, once again, the saw, the steel MSA 70C with the 12-inch steel carving bar. Now, if you want the, the thicker chain, the steel carving bar with the 50 gauge. Okay, so this carving bar, if you want to write this down right now, this carving bar would be 12 inch. That's all they make is the 12 inch bars. 50 gauge because they're all quarter pitch. This 50 gauge and this old, the thicker one and the thicker, thinner one are both quarter pitch. Does that make sense to you? The sprockets quarter pitch. So these bars, I hope I'm not making this confusing. These bars come thinner. Or thicker thicker for the 50 gauge thinner for the 043 gauge so you order the saw you order the bar 
with the 50 gauge if you want the thicker chain and I suggest getting the thicker chain okay okay so now if you're gonna like carve fast and hard I suggest you because when you buy this saw you get a battery with it and you get a charger all right I think I did anyways I think Chris bought this saw he didn't send the battery but I think Chris kept his battery which I don't blame him I don't need I already got two so now I got I already had three sorry so if you're gonna buy this saw and you're gonna carve fast and hard I suggest you order a spare battery now if you order the spare battery like I said it comes with the charger this is the char I know it's hard to see in here this is the charger it comes with all right but I got the speed charger so when you got the speed charger by the time that you're carving done carving with that battery and the battery is pretty well dead this battery should almost pretty well be ready to go okay not with this this is a slug this takes a long time this thing you hear it me fires up the fan gets going in there and it it charges it super quick so i do suggest getting yourself a spare battery saving up some money and getting this the quick charger the quick charger is wicked all right so i think i got that covered this could be a long video i still have to carve three trees here's one i'm carving the little ones now here's one here and then there's two here little ones and then this one's going to be a tree of life um steve kenzora said i should carve it my own style tree of life so that's going to be that maybe or i might put the tree of life in the back of this chair and it pisses me off that piece of wood got wet down there so i got to move that out of the out of the wetness but anyways stand by okay like i said this is going to be a real time with spill let me turn off this back back light here okay that's better this is going to be a real time wood spirit carving with the battery saw the, well, the saw chris bought me so wood spirit how do you want to do it like um so you got your your log uh, i forget how wide it is but first of all where do you want to put your face on on this piece you know i should really actually you know cut this and get two wood spirits out of the one piece because it's Christmas time, people are buying smaller things right now for inside the house, but that's okay. Who knows? Maybe I'll just maybe I'll carve it and the beard won't come down that far and I can cut it off and then carve another one in here. So center line is important. I know it's gonna be super hard to see with this uh because this wood's the outside of the wood's wet, not the inside, I don't think. So center line. We'll put our eyes across here. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to scrape this on or something. Stand by. Maybe this big sucker will do it. Okay, so our eyes. Central line. Our forehead. Our forehead comes at three points. One, two, three. So go up here. Boom. Boom. And boom. So boom, boom, boom. I learned that from Kevin Sticks and Stones. Then your face comes down here. Always leave it wider our nose actually i told myself i'm going to try carving the nose in without doing this triangle part on the bottom i'm going to try it different i'm just going to kind of go like this and cut it straight and see what happens normally i go like this that way you can get the um, nostrils on each side but i don't know we'll see what happens so then we don't have to worry about anything else right now what I'm gonna do first, first of all, I gotta sharpen those saws. They're dull as dull can be. I don't use a file to sharpen my saws. I use a Dremel. This is the thing that I got, easy do. All right, this is a diamond tipper on here. It's uh, 530 seconds, the file thing, the diamond thing. So I like the diamonds on here because when you use the stones, you know, if halfway through you're, you're sharpening the chain, the stone gets thinner, and then you lose the proper size. At least with these diamond burrs, you don't lose the size. 
you just you just can't do it as fast because then the, you'll rip the bird the diamond fake diamonds off there okay i'm not going to go over how to sharpen chainsaw there's lots of videos on youtube the best way to do it is with your files i'm lazy i do it that way okay so we got this drawn on what i'm going to do first is i'm going to cut 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 here and then i'm going to it's harder with the smaller bars, but I'm going to slope this wood back in the forehead. Okay, I'm going to slope. I'm going to, let's do this. The goal of this video is, because if you look at the side view of a, I say this on lots of my videos. If you look at the side view of a human's face, the nose always sticks farthest off the face. It does. Somebody disagreed with me about that before, but I'm like, okay, well, show me a, it's, it's like a, Chinese person with a punched in face. Oh, well, sorry, I shouldn't say Chinese, but like, uh, actually, speaking of uh, Asians, I was at a dollar store the other day standing in a lineup, and this lady, um, she was Asian. Man, her eyeballs, her eyeballs stuck farthest off her face than her nose. So I'm not saying it's anything bad about Asians, but I'm just saying, like, her eyeballs were like way out here. It was like crazy. Because I look at people's faces for different features, right? Everybody's different. So let's do that. For this video, we'll make the nose. Let's really plan on making the nose stick way far off the face. The, and the human's face is not way far off, but this is a wood spirit. We're not trying to car carve a human face. We're not trying to carve a wizard. Right? Oh, we got some bark here. Hopefully that doesn't... Hopefully, because sometimes this bark goes super deep in there. Let's just have fun. So our goal for this video is to get the nose to pop really far off the face. Give this car Rob a good side view. And we want it to look somewhat like a human old face. That You know, like, I'm not a good enough, I'm not a realistic carver. I'm not a realism carver. So, you know, the more that you do, the better you get. But as long as it looks like some kind of face in there, good enough for me. That's what I think every single time. Now let's travel down this river here. Now the only one thing I don't like about these battery saws, sorry I don't have the, the light on. The only thing I don't like about these battery saws is that they use a lot of bar oil. So you always have to check the bar oil because... It's kind of stupid, right? Like these these chains spin so much slower than the gas saws, and but they use twice as much oil. But that's really the only complaint I got for for these battery saws. Otherwise, I freaking love these saws. I don't have any others. You you buy the others, bad like the, I think it's the two hundred. It's like holding a tank. You know, at least when you buy this saw, you get the battery and you get a charger too. You get a kit. Now, I'm not going to say any names, but somebody says, oh, you should never do blocking out with a, a carving bar, a 12-inch carving bar. Well, I fucking take this thing to the beach and I block out shit all the time. Okay, I don't have my microphone in, but here's the set. MSA 70C. Please remember, very beginners, when you're doing anything with your chainsaw, like cleaning it or anything, pop the battery. Make sure the battery's not in. This is a friggin' dangerous tool, all right? It's dangerous. What you're doing with carving is you're trying to have fun, but you're using a dangerous tool. So just be careful. Safety. Uh, steel toe boots, chaps, like safety chainsaw pants, eye protection, um, earplugs, and um, have a good time. Have so much fun. You can't even have so much fun you pee your pants, but be safe. Usually, the best videos, actually, you know what, honestly, I do my best carving when I don't sleep. Like, I'm not tired. If I was tired, I wouldn't be here. I think I need to go to the doctors, and I'm not wearing my mic. I think I need to go to the doctors and um, get that uh, sleep app, you know, sleep, that sleep machine, because I keep waking up every 10 minutes. Anyways, but Okay. About sharpening your chainsaws, your chains. I'm, like I said, I'm not filming how to do it. I sharpen mine. Watch videos. The be the better that you can make your saws sharp, the better you're going to have a better day carving. It's better for your saw. It's better for you. 
and it's better for the wood. So also, when you're watching all the videos, uh, Buck and Billy Ray's a good uh, one that sharpens saws. Ryan Cook has an awesome video. Uh, I still talk to Ryan. Ryan's my still buddy. We're just doing our things. Um, he's busy doing the bigger stuff, and I just kind of have more fun, like I'm um, doing things what I'm doing. I'm not saying he doesn't have fun, but I'm supposed to go out there this month sometime, but we'll see what happens. Um, keep your chains sharp, and don't forget about the rakers. You got little rakers in there. You need to bring this chain. I hit a huge rock or something with it. It was screwed up. I don't even know if it's going to work. Hopefully it does, but you see, um, let's see, see right there. That little nub there make sure you take your rakers down a bit but don't listen to me watch the videos I want, I'm gonna pull out another bar well, let's see if we can get some better lighting here this is the dime tip I'm gonna pull out a different bar if I got it here okay since we're going over the basics we'll call this uh, video Jordy does the basics on uh, chainsaw carving with battery saws or something like that so here's your typical cannon bar these are everybody loves the cannon bars they're made um, 20, this company's 20 minutes away from me, but I can't go there and buy them. If you do want to buy a Cannon Bar in Canada, Ryan Cook sells them. Just Google Ryan Cook, or you can see on his YouTube channel, he talks about them. So in Canada, Ryan Cook sells them. He's sponsored by Canon too. And in the USA, um, Bob King. So just, uh, he's on Facebook, just Facebook Bob King or Ryan Cook for the Cannon Bars, okay? So this... This is the dime tip. This is a Forrester bar um, that tapes to prevent oil from wrapping around your bar and going onto the muffler, but we won't talk about that. Um, this is the Forrester bar. Okay, I think it's Forrester or Forrester. This bar, like you see that where it's heated up there that's no good that means i probably wasn't i didn't have enough oil running through it or something but that's okay it's fine this bar is a quarter tip all right this is a dime tip so you can see how the difference this bar i i don't hold me to it but this is an expensive bar this is well over 100 bucks this bar is 50 bucks on amazon so just uh amazon forester bars uh, maybe I'll put a link to it down below if I have enough time. This is an 8-inch Forrester bar. So this is the, the dime tip. This is the, uh, the quarter tip, all right? Quarter pitch. So this is the thicker gauge. So if you want the thicker gauge chain, may, may, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, quarter pitch. Fuck, I, I hope I'm not confusing you guys. If you want the thicker gauge chain, make you sure you, it says 050. 050 is a thicker chain. 043 is a thinner chain. Actually, this is 043 bar right here. This is a smaller chain bar. Let me see if I can stand these up so you guys can see the difference. See the one I'm wiggling around? See how much thicker that is? See the channel there? See how much bigger it is when I'm wiggling? This is for the 50. This is for the 50 gauge. This is for the 043. Okay, I hope I don't confuse you guys. But this Forester bar, there's one on my little 2511 right now. Exact same bar, okay? Exact same bar. And I got two more coming. I got, they, they do sell dime tips. The only thing about these, um, these bars, this Forester, they don't ship to Canada. I don't know if they ship to the UK. I think they only ship in the USA. So I had to ask just Carve Rob if I can get two bars shipped to his house and he ships them to me. So he, he agreed. And so, and I had the warrior did it for me too. That's why I got these two bars. I, I got them from the warrior and then uh skipper also, um, I sold them one, but then I bought it back off. Them. These bars are good, man. They, they do me just fine. I don't care what the pros say. I'm heavy on shit. I break shit. I have yet to break one of these cheap bars yet. Yeah, I'm going to leave a link to this to this um, bar for Amazon in the description below. Just hit the more button if you're on your computer or something. I suggest it. I really do. I'm not trying to take anything away from Canon. Like these are supposed to be the very best out there. I'm not trying. 
But that's why I'm not sponsored by anybody, because I can say what I want, when I want, how I want. Okay, is this mic working? Okay, back to the wood spirit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the outside of this wood really quickly so you guys can see what I'm drawing on. How's that? Better? I'll just use my chainsaw. My gas chainsaw. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to get all the basics. So if, if you order this saw and you order the steel bar with the 50 gauge, the chain is called RM13, something like that, I believe. Steve Kenzora told me about it. Hi, Steve, if you ever watch these videos anymore. But Steve's a professional chainsaw curver. If I got real, real neat advice, I'll talk to Steve or Ryan or Ke Uncle Kevin. Um, but, yeah, so... It's RM13 or something. If somebody knows the name of the chain, can you list it, say it below in the comments, and um, I will pin it to the top. And uh, if you guys can like this video too, it really helps with the algorithm and um, use car salesman. Okay, you can see I got the wood here cleaned up really good. It's beautiful, solid piece of cedar. I can see when I was carving, like that's dry. That's still wet, but when I was carving deeper into it, it was drier. Um, one question I do get asked quite a bit um, from from the very beginning carvers is, is pine a good wood to, to carve? Well, it sure is. Lots of um, I'm lucky to get this stuff. That's just where I live. It, I live in a rainforest, British Columbia, Canada. It's like a friggin' rainforest here. And I live right by the Vancouver Island, so lots of driftwood f off the ships that get shipped to China. Lots of these logs fall off the ships. So, uh, yes, pine is a very good wood to carve. Lots of chainsaw carvers around the world, that's all they do is carve pine. So, yes, the answer that, to that is pine is good to carve. When you find driftwood like this, there's sand in here. Like in this bark, there's... Sand makes your chains dull super fast. Trust me. So I skin that. So hopefully, like if there's any little cracks in here, trust me, there'll be sand inside there, and it makes you dull. Your your chain dull. Another thing I get asked a lot too: what bar do I, what bar oil do I use? This is just cheap shit from uh, Walmart. It's like twenty six bucks for the twenty two bucks for this or something now Canadian, but um. This is stuff I use, or this is cornholia oil, canola oil. Um, I'll use this stuff for the my battery saws. I, I just basically, you know what, like, I'll spend the extra money and use this for my gas saws for the bar oil. You know, if you want to get your steel stuff or your echo stuff or whatever. But I, I definitely use this for my, um, for my battery saws. One thing about this stuff, though, you know, once you're done your, your carving for the day, it's good to, uh, if you got a, like a compressor and an air nozzle like this, to blow out your saw because that stuff gets um, pretty sticky. And if you don't clean it up right away, your, your saw can get a little bit gummed up. But who knows, this might do it too. This, they say this stuff's thicker and it sticks to your bar better, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I use this for my gas saws. It doesn't have to be this make, or I use this for my uh, battery saws, the canola oil. All right, let's go back to the wood spirit. One thing about the canola oil is like, uh, people will be like, well, it's better for the environment. Well, how's the friggin' chainsaw, a little bit of ch oil in the bar gonna save the environment? Like every penny makes a puddle. No, every drop makes a puddle. Every puddle makes a river. Every river makes an ocean. You guys got cool lighter cases like this? I made this one for my friend. Put a little koi fish on it. Anyways. Oh, yeah, I also sliced a bit of this piece up. The, I go off on rave rants when I'm friggin' having slept. I, I slice this up. Look at this. Beautiful cedar. Oh, yes. Bone dry. I knew it. As soon as I touched it and looked, kicked it on the beach, knew it was bone dry. I don't know. What do you guys think? Think it looks like a bear? Look at that piece of U-wood there. Look at that color. 
There's another piece of your wood right here. But um, what was I going to say? I forgot. <laughs> oh, safety. Yeah, you should wear a desk mask, but uh, I'm not wearing a desk mask because, well, I'm going to be talking when I'm carving. But when I'm doing the when I'm doing the die grinder stuff, I'm going to uh, be wearing my trend. My I'll talk more about this, my uh, dust mask thing here. I'm going to show you guys all the tools that I use. Just wait until it starts raining. You guys probably aren't even going to watch this video because all you're going to hear is ta -ta 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 up here. It's sure a lot darker in here since I put that uh, heavy-duty tarp on there. Yeah. This is a good sucker. This is industrial tarp. But I'm going to need to get another light up in here somewhere. You guys think it's uh, too dark? No, it's not bad. I'm going to turn off that light. Let's do this. Stand by. So watch that light in the back. Is that better? I think it's better because it focuses more on the uh, piece I'm working on. What do you guys think? Love to hear in the comments. Okay, so I got a bunch of pens here. Let's see which one works the best. So how much hair do you want to have up here? You don't need to have hair up here if you don't want. And I got to step in front of the camera to make sure I'm center, your center line. Um, forehead. This will be your eyebrow line. There's formulas. There's formulas online like um, they say the bridge of the nose is one fifth. So you got, so you'd have like one, two, three, four, five. And they all should all be the same lengths. So your eyes would be two, two, then one in the bridge of the nose. We don't need to draw this uh, mustache on. We'll draw that on later. And you can do your mustache. Wood spirits can be whatever, however you want to make them. There's so many different ways. You don't need to cut this forehead in first. You can cut across the eyes, take all this and do this. Then cut the forehead in after. There's so many different ways to do it. Just, just find the way that you like to do it. That's all I suggest. Just have fun and be safe. So I'm going to have a little break. Then I'll pull out the, uh, the brand new Chris Birdhouse MSA 70C. Yeah. Okay, it's all uh, oiled up. See the speed control? Now, doing the forehead with the smaller bar is a little bit harder because if you had the longer bar, you, well, I guess I can do it. It's just a little bit trickier with the shorter bar. Not really, but I don't know. So I'm going to try my best to stay off the um, camera, but sometimes I might have to jump in front of it. So I'm going to do a deep cut here, here, and then down here. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Oh yes, this chain is sharp. I sharpened it good. Okay, so there's that. So now what we'll do is we'll slope it back. This is where I might have to jump in front of the camera. I need to 
Let's jump over here. Good enough. Clean all this up after. This is beautiful cedar. Feels pretty dry inside here. Like it's wet here, but this is pretty dry. Just let's do the eyes. I'm just going to cut this a bit off here because I can see it sloped this way. Okay. Now you can cut the nose in if you want, or you can do a bevel cut like this. Okay, so let's, because we want the nose to pop, if we want the nose, is this mic working? Yep. We want the nose to pop way off. The way to get the nose to pop way off is carve these eyebrows down deeper. So I'm going to get the saw and just do a, a slice cut. I might have to come back. Watch, when you're cutting on the back stroke, on the back cut, make sure you keep your face away from kickback because there's a possible chance sometimes you get kicked back that way, but. See, that's why when you got a longer bar, it's easier to get up in there because I'm sure you guys can understand. So I'm going to hold this on and push down like this. See that? How I'm almost kicked back. Trust me, with chainsaws, if there's a way, hopefully, hopefully this thing's on screen. If there's a way for this to... Um, if there's a way to make a cut, and you got the chainsaw in hand, you're going to make that cut. Perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to draw on the nose again, but when I do this side of the nose, I better draw it on. Center line. When I do when I do this side of the nose, I hold my bar like that. Make sure you don't hold it in like like this, because then your nose will be too thin. You have to just try and hold it not straight on, but bevel it that way a little bit. Then this side bevel a little bit that that way. Okay, now I might have now see. I wasn't paying attention. See how I should have put the more, nose more over this way. Now this side of the face is smaller than this side. This side's bigger than this side. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. Okay. So now I'm going to chip out this piece right here. Make sure you don't cut up into the nose. Okay. Oops. So now because I want to show you guys that, see how that right side of the face is bigger? This is the thing you just kind of watch for when you're doing it. But it's easy because all I need to do, what, because this face, we want to make our face rounded, right? Because this face, if you do this, I call this the punch in effect. The nose is punched in, then the cheeks come way out past the nose. 
So what I'm going to do is a slice down here. Not too deep though, because you got to have your beard come off. But whatever. So now I'm going to make sure I cut this one. So that's there. Bolt right there. The same size as that. Okay. Even though I took all that that wood back here on the eyebrows, this nose is still not sticking farthest off the face. You know, the best way to carve a face with your Dremel carvings is to carve, like I say, to carve a piece like this where it's like um, where it's like that, because then you already got your nose sticking off. You're not carving such a flat um flat piece so i get my with these battery saws too i get my air blower and i blow out here once in a while so i don't plug up so what i'm going to do now is try and slope this face slope it that way then slope it that way if you got to recarve the eyebrows then not a big deal See how it's kind of sloped that way now? Let's hope this one makes sure you got enough thickness there. a lot different than Dremel carving because you're removing chunks at a time. Dremel carving you're slowly removing the wood like you'd be like you'd be doing when you're using the bottom of this bar. So let's recut those eyes. In. Okay. So I want to take this, I want to take these eyebrows farther down, farther back. You guys will see me going there like a crazy madman. I got to make sure I'm filming on my own old fold, so I got to make sure I, I don't use up all the like. I got to make sure I have enough room to edit this video and upload it. So now the nose is starting to pop off, but we you still got to slope it back this way too, right? Like that. Might as well do that. Yeah. Let's keep chipping away. So you guys know I'm taking the way long route doing this so you guys can kind of see.
Okay. Just trying to simplify it the best I can. So before we go any farther, the bridge of the nose we're gonna make, we're gonna take it more in. But you got your eyebrows here. So we're gonna go like this with the tip of the bar. We're gonna remove the first of all, we're gonna do a cut here. Might as well just do a cut straight across, round it, round it here, then remove that wood in there, then remove the wood up here with the tip of your bar. With the bottom part of the tip, not the top. I gotta check the oil on my saw. Oh, they say the oiler is, um, you can see the oil better, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I need to oil it up, stand by. You don't always need to take it so far deeper in there. Like me taking it so far deep in there, look how deep I went. It's gonna give you more problems because you're gonna have a problem getting your bar in there and stuff, right? So. Now let's see if that nose sticks farthest. The log goes like this. So yeah, the nose does stick farthest off the face. So now let's let's just do that cut. Chisel away. Pretend you got Dremel with the tip of your bar removing this wood. Cut here, cut here, and then remove some more of the forehead. And then imagine how much farther it's going to be back. Clean up that nose a bit. So I made the nose a bit thinner. I cut this eyebrow too far over that way. It should connect where the nose is. That's not a big deal. You just gotta adapt and adjust. So what I'm gonna do now is, well, let's clean this nose up a bit more. Okay, so now the cedar's getting wetter when it gets back closer to the back of the wood, but it's fine. It's still nice. It's solid. Um, now I'm going to use the tip of the bar to scoop out these eyes a bit.
take these eyebrows down again. Because you got room. See, now that nose is really coming off. And I can correct the eyebrows. So I just carve deeper, right? I'm not worried about making it too clean up under here because I can use my die grinder. Look how deep that's going in there because we got we trying to make this nose stick off for it, right? Okay, hold on a sec. Now we're punched in there, big time. That's the pitch of it, so yeah. Okay, now, what kind of mustache do you want to put in there? Do you want to put it so he's got a bottom lip in there? Or do you want to put it so it's so it comes off here? Or do you want to make it straight down? You can do the mustaches and the bottom lips any way you want to do them. Let me uh, have a little break here, and I'll think of what's the best way that I can do it so you guys can understand. I'm filming in 4K right now. I might have to switch this over to regular video. I think I will right now, actually. Yeah, so you might notice the quality of the video dropping because I had to... 4K eats up all that memory, so... Anyways, beard time. You can see this is totally awkward right now. Nothing's, like... See how far these cheeks... That's, a, that's fine because your eyes come in... Then your cheeks come out too, right? Like, just look at pictures of human faces. Just trying our best, having a good time. You know, when I'm doing this um, tutorial, I'm not the best at carving wood spirits. There's way better carvers than me that do the wood spirits. But um, I'm trying to go as slow as I can. I usually, like normally I'd have this wood spirit done already. But I'm um, just trying to do it so you guys can get some ideas and kind of maybe you're struggling. I know most of you struggle with the nose and the eyes, but um, I'm not gonna be able to talk too much. I'll explain what I'm gonna do. We're gonna leave lots of room for die grinder work here. So if you're gonna get into chainsaw carving, I really do suggest you get yourself a die grinder and a Dremel too. There's lots of other things you need. It's not a cheap hobby. Okay, so I decided that we'll give this guy the beard that comes off. Like, look at your mouth where it comes up, see the sides of, sides of your mouth i know i got a big mouth your mouth the sides where it comes up like i'm talking about i'm cheeky it comes up past your no your nostrils right so and your mustache comes way off farther than your nose but like i said 
the more that you look at real faces and you have pictures of real faces, the more that you'll be able to be a realistic carver. So, but for me, I might have to fix this. But sorry, here's your center line. Or you can have it come down like this and have your, you know, you have a mouth in there. So I'm going to get the saw. Careful not to hit your nose. You know, you could also run it up the nose and go down like that, but that's a diff whole different story. So let's just do this cut here. Cut here. Remove the wood on the outside. Your mustache does not need to stick that far off the face. I know I got a bullshit goatee and stuff, but your mustache blends into your beard right here. Right? Your beard would go right here. So it, if you want to have a long mustache, have a long mustache. But if you want to blend it into the beard, it's more realistic looking. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we move on. Hey Chris, this saw is ripping pretty good, buddy. Love it. Thank you. You guys can see how much carving I did. Battery's dead. I'll switch out the battery. Some say, some say with these saws, you know, like when you get a, when you switch out the battery, that's when you should check your oil. Uh, not for me. Just keep cutting deeper until you're happy. I'm taking the mustache lower do a cut in here just try and keep both sides equal okay so many people many people do their beards different ways I just kind of I just kind of do it so be like down here Sorry, I got to go in front of the camera. And down here, like I said, try and make both sides equal where the face, you know, you can make your beard kind of go round like this. Just, just curve Rob does that. So his beard's kind of round up there, but I just kind of, I don't know, I just cut it in. A, I need to slow down. If I slowed down as a carver, or as an artist, whatever, I'd be a lot better, so... I su suggest for all you people, friends, just take your time and keep on looking at both sides of the face. Try and make them equal. This eyebrow is a little bit higher than this one. I can fix that later. Okay, so I'm going to slice here. Not, I'm going to slice here, but I got to leave room for my beard. On hearing shit. I'm the 
never the best at getting the beard to roll off the face. I just kind of, maybe I just don't care enough. I'm not trying to make any excuses for myself. Okay. Got to keep check, making sure this mic's uh, not all over the map. So, let's do a side view here. Look how far that nose sticks off. Boom, you can't even see the eyebrows. Here's your cheeks. You got some cheeks here too, right? So this is the time where you decide what kind of uh, mustache you want to give them. Like I said earlier, you can give them center line. You can give them this kind of mustache. It comes down. You can give them a mouth here. You can give them a slope mouth. But we're going to go for this type. So, look at this much. So, this is what I'm talking about. Keeping both sides equal. Look how much farther this comes off than this side. Just little things like that. Like, I got to look on the center. So, let's not take it so much. Make it even smaller. So I need to trim this mustache down before I do anything. I'm just trying to show you guys how my how my mind works for this type of stuff. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Not too deep. Actually, we gotta take this. Part. I did that cut, so I want to keep everything equal. Okay. Does that look the same as that side? Looks close enough to me. This side's pushed back more, so I'm push, pushing this one back a bit more. Okay, so now you can think filming. So there you go. So that you've established the mustache. Now you can put. Um, it's like Stephen Kinzora says. One thing that really drives him nuts when he. Uh, Watches people car uh, sees people carve wood spirits is when their bottom lip's too big. So all I need to do is just a little cut here, not too deep, then remove some of the wood below the lip. All right? You can make it so there's an upper lip here too, right in there. But uh, I don't think we're going to go that route today. The little lip. A big tip Ryan Cook taught me when you're say if you're gonna burn this piece, dig really deep into each corner of the lip, like take take some wood out inside there. Because if you burn it, you can burn deep there. When you sand it, that burns that burn stays in there and it adds depth. So I'm gonna do that right now.
Now, if you want, you can remove some of this wood, but kind of like he's got a chin there. Now let me stand back and look at this, see what's going on. See that's taking shape? We got so much depth in there. So now these lines if my compressor goes off, I'll have to pause this video. Because it's there it goes. I hate that freaking sound! I got a better one, but I don't want to keep it here in the winter time. Okay, so the beard. So one thing I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have cut so deep here because the beard would be coming off the face right here, but that's okay. So the beard comes off. We're just going to have this guy's beard like this. Right where that bark line is, actually. Do a cut here. And bring it down like that. So I'm going to cut here, cut here, then remove the wood below the beard. So cut, cut, then cut the wood so the beard pops off. So the deeper that you make the cut, the farthest the beard, the farther the beard will stick off this bottom piece. I'm hope I'm making sense for you, everybody. So you can. make that look so round after so now I'm gonna remove this wood here make sure this is in camera It's okay if you cut into the beard, nobody will see that. So I want to slope this wood so it's not like this, like an obvious cut. I want to slope it back, make it straight. We're going to blend this beard in with this mustache in a minute there. So look where I started here. I'll start up there. When you're doing these cuts, sometimes you want to keep your face away from this chain, but sometimes you want to look in there and you can feel when that tip of bar, when that tip of the bar hits the void. Okay, this should just pop right out. Nope. Don't try it. It should pop out easy. If it doesn't, don't keep on trying to pry it out with the tip of your bar because I've broke a bar that way before. Oh. 
you don't need to do it this way. This is just kind of what I do. Sometimes do it different all the time. Okay, so now, see this beard here? And right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna have to go close. See this? That's the beard, that's the mustache. So now what I'm gonna do is just do one cut and blend that beard into the mustache. Same with this side, I gotta bevel that out, but blend the beard into the mustache right there. Sometimes you gotta cut upside down. See, I'm just kind of rounding that. It gives it a nicer round effect. Okay, we still got a little bit more to do there. Okay. Voila. There's some bark, some of this bark stuff here. Let me see if I can clean that up. All right. I think it's taken shape quite nicely. You know, you don't have to do all this stuff. This is just stuff I do. You guys will find your own things that you want to do. Hope you guys are learning. Got a big full beard there. It's kind of Rob's side view. I think it's almost, uh, well, I see one spot there. This is good for me too, taking my time. So these things you can bring them up higher to match the nostrils okay um, I wonder if I should do that with the I'm gonna do it with the chainsaw so you guys see what I'm doing so you got your nostril up here then you recut it in so make this card Rob gives me crap he says I need to make my nostrils up higher just kidding Okay, so be very delicate with your saw right now. So a thin little cut there and bring it down and make it come all the way around. We might run into some problems with this nose. That's better. I think it's pretty well die grinder time. What do you guys think so far? Wish I could 
read your comments right now. See, we got a little bit of a cracked chip out there. It's okay. We had to clean it up with the die grinder. So with the die grinder, what I'll do first is I'm going to scoop in these eyes. I'm going to smooth all this out. And I'm going to jump back and forth and make try and make sure. Like, let's look here. Both sides of the face are equal. This cheekbone needs to come down more. Right? Like, I'm feeling my face. The mustache, it, the cheekbone is higher than the mustache, but I need to take it down a little bit more. I just work on side to side, all right? Make clean, I'm going to clean all this stuff up here, split that a bit more, give them a little bit more eyebrows, clean up in here. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do this here yet, but do the nice round cut here, work on the nose, make the nose nice and smooth. You can give it the little bump there, like cut deeper there, and then you got a bump, bump there. Clean up the bottom lip, cut deeper inside there with a the die grinder, right? So I look at this piece now, and I can see here the mustache. This one's thicker, so I need to do a cut right here just to keep myself on track. Does that make sense to you? My hand's shaking. to give both sides the same depthness. De is that a word? There you got some depth in there. I don't know if I was filming for that. <sighs> Sawdust in my throat. Okay, stand by. I'm going to pull out the die grinder. Talk about that for a minute. Okay, so it's die grinder time. I'm not going to be able to do much um, talking because I'll have my dust mask on. This is the one David Grass bought me. Thank you, David. This is an expensive die grinder. This thing's like, I forget, it's like over 400 bucks. But this thing is the cat's ass. Cat's meow. This uh, is GD800C. All right, the GD, if you want to write that down. Um, you can buy the Makita with the black handle. I, I don't know the model number. I gave that away for a giveaway. Um, but... If you can afford a good die grinder, get this one. This one, this thing kicks ass. This is another make. This is the Meetabo. This one is this one is almost my favorite. I got this. This is an expensive one too. I got this at a flea market like this for 50 bucks, man. It was such a score. Both of them have speed control. Why I like this one, because this has a like your Dremels, this has a locking pin. So you just need a wrench and pop it out. It's got a nice handle on there too. These ones you can put tape. Uh, Ryan Cook puts, I think he's got his uh, one of his daughter's diapers on his, but um, you can put tape on here or whatever to get a better grip. But you can buy the, the one with the black handle. If you're from Canada, I don't know if you guys in the States have Canadian tire. Why would you have Canadian tire in the States? What's it, what's it called? USA tire? But... Um, if you're from Canada, don't buy the Mastercraft one. That's well, you know, if you if that's all you can afford, then do it. Because that's what I started out with. All I before I even had a chainsaw, I had the Mastercraft one. Or if you can't, if you don't have much money, um, what's it called? Pr Princess Auto is in Canada. I don't know if we have them at um, Harbor Freight in, in America has uh, Chicago die grinders. They're like fifty bucks. So. If, if that's what you got to do to get started, then do it, man. Just buy whatever you can do. But I, if you have money or you want to save up for a good die grinder, um, this is proven. I got two of these. This is proven to me. This this meetable one is not – I haven't used it enough. I don't even know what the model number of it is. The model number is um, G G E. 
710 plus tell me this thing's working yeah ge 710 plus so but this is a proven tool makita um, ryan swears by makita ryan cook you guys check out his channel he's a professional chainsaw carver he's doing lots of fun winter carvings right now he was uh one of the judges on that show the cut above don't know if they're going to have a season two or not but um this has got speed control too. So the bird that I got on here, I'm going to try out with this one. This is the cut. I'm going to come in behind the camera here. I got the Cutsaw Extreme Flame Burr. Quarter inch goes in the die grinders in your Fordhams, okay? This is the silver one. Now, if this wood's a little bit too wet and this thing plugs up, I'll switch over to the Metabo because it's got the Cutsaw Extreme Flame Burr in there. Now, look how aggressive this one is. Yeah, that's a skin ripper, all right. Okay, and this won't plug up as much as the silver one. So, like I said, let me pull the camera off the tripod here. I already got my little cuts in there for the nostrils, so I'm gonna go like this boom, I'm gonna tape feather this all in, make it nice and clean, clean up the bottom lip, like clean up stuff like that, dig deeper in each corner. Okay, smooth out these eyes, take these cheekbones down a little bit lower. Try to like this one's good here. This one needs to come a little bit lower. Clean up the forehead. Uh, just kind of jump back and forth and shape it to try and make both sides equal. Right now they're pretty good. I can see this beard comes off a bit smoother than this one. It's okay. All right, so yeah, this is this is pretty wet in here actually. So c come up here with that. Okay. Let's do it like this. Let me explain. like, Because I'm not going to be able to explain. I'm going to try my best to stay in camera. I'm going to come up here. Boom. Down here. Then you got your nostril sticking off. I'm going to remove some of this wood right here. That will make your nostril pop off, right? Because you have that cut here. Remove this wood. Then your nostril will stick farther off. Remove some of this wood. Clean it up on both sides. You're going to see me going like this. Then you're going to see me going like this. I will try my very best to stay out of the camera. I guess I'll talk about my dust mask. This is the Trend Air Pro. Trend Total Technology. I think this is the Air Pro. This is like a $600 dust mask. It was $500 bucks when I bought it. But you can have a beard with this. See, it's like a hard hat in there. That's how it does up. It's got a rechargeable battery, right? It's got filters. So see those filters in there? It blows the air in, stops the dust, it blows the air in, and it cannot fog up once the fan's going, all right? So there's a filter here and a filter on this side. This is one of the best investments I've made, chainsaw carving. You can get the ones in the States, I think they're called the, the air caps or something. But this one I got in Canada at KMS Tools. But you can get these on Amazon too. And once again, it's in my Amazon store to save you guys the trouble of Trend Air Pro Professional or something. Trend, is that the name there? Trend Air Shield Pro right there. Trend Air Shield, Air Shield Pro. All right, it does not fog up. Stand by. If you guys can't afford the expensive mask, you can get dusk masks like this. I think I got like five of them for like 15 bucks. Change the filters. Uh, Larry Dibbs gave me this one. Get ones like that. I don't mind this one. Or you get ones like this, the 3M ones. This one might not be 3M, but you get ones like this too. Anyways. I am going to put my earbuds on and I'm going to be listening to... What do I want to listen to today? I'm going to be listening to... Um, hey, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam is a good band. Pearl Jam slows me down.
See how the mustache is sticking far off the face? I'm gonna take it down now.
crow up there. So if you ask me, I think this is going pretty good. I kind of took his cheekbones a little bit too much in right here. And I said, oh, I'll just stop and leave that. So, you know, he could have a little bit more of a bump for his uh, cheekbones right there. But me and just Carver, all we're talking about it. The thinner that you can make his temples, the better it's going to look also. So, you can see here, well, that's fairly dry wood. A little bit of wetness there, no big deal. Another just carb rob side view. Look at all the side views you're getting today. I struggled a little bit with the nose because it's the first time that I did that with the straight bottom, but I like it. My noses always have their own kind of style. I don't know. Big, big nose troughs, not troughs, just carb rob calls them. Just carb rob, you need to start making more videos. I know what I could do to even this out. See how that there is there. I'm just letting you guys know my thinking. See how that is there. I could push this back a little bit more too, but it's okay. I think it's pretty well on point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the beard hairs in all down here. The mustache hairs, blend them all together, cut under here. Pretend this is, the, pretend this is my bar, my hand right here, okay? I don't do my cuts straight on. I slope it way over and I go like this um Steve Kenzori does really awesome beard hairs and I like the way Steve does his hair up here um, I just never really been able to figure it out I try but um, the more you do the better you're gonna get so like I said you're gonna see me use this I don't do the straight cuts I go like this on the side of the bar then I'll come over here and do it then I'll jump over here and then you'll see me do it the side of the bar here too. And it's kind of cross the hairs. You can make nice clean hairs, one each strand if you want. But I like to cross them and make it all look like a friggin' mess. I'll do my best to try and remember I'm recording. So I'm just going to go like this. Wow. A lot slower with that. I'll have to clean that up later. It's a lot slower with the um, the battery saw. See how much oil that's spitting out? Watch this. Watch right here how it darkens up. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side. that up with a die grinder so there 
It's how fast. See how they're all crossed, and I'll take a look and see something that I don't like. I don't like this, so I'll just kind of... Man, this saw is cutting nice today, boy. I'm just going to quickly hit this with the die grinder. Good enough. I wasn't wearing my mask there, which is stupid. All you moms and dads, don't give me crap for not wearing my mask. So there's side view. His nose is a little bit funky because I hit it with the chainsaw. That's when I said be careful with the nose with the die grinder, with the chainsaw. Um, I do have uh, a friend sent and a subscriber sent us some, sent me some uh, refills for the Sando Flex. But he made um, some plastic things, but I'm not going to show those quite yet. I'll, I think I might wait more till the springtime so I can make a video and try and get the guy some business because he wants to possibly sell them. They're the plastic things. They go inside the, the refills then you put your own sandpaper on it. So I want to make a, just a single video for that. But um, these are on Amazon. I, I don't think these are in my store but just uh, quarter inch flap wheels you'll find these. I think you get like two for 15 bucks. They last pretty good. Here's one here that I've been using. But this one's kind of on its way out because you don't want to hit that washer on the wood. But you can still use this. But I'm going to pull out the new one. I'm going to sand this up a bit first. And then, uh-oh. Um, uh-oh. Uh the ice. The ice. And I'll just use that. i got to get a drill out. Or another thing I like to use lately is this Scotch Bright. This is comes in these. This is in my Amazon store. This is 3M. Comes in a box. This is ready rod. Okay. So you got a piece of ready rod. I don't know what size this quarter inch. You got a nut, two nuts on the back. I glue those in place with a washer back there. You can't see it, but there's a nut and washer here. You can't see the washer, but then you just get a plastic or a steel pipe and you put this so you can hold this and it can spin. But um, let's try with this first. This doesn't work that good. Then I'll switch over to um, this sucker. Before I get to sanding, um, this, you know, you put this in your drill and the, this spins. This is the extender. Lots of people wonder where to get this. Uh, Bob King, once again, he sells these on his, uh, I forget what the name of his site is called, but once again, Facebook Bob King and send him a message, ask him what his site's called. But he's got a site that sells all the carving stuff for America. I think he only does America. Ryan Cook, I don't know if he has these yet. But Ryan Cook's chainsaw shops in uh, Canada. Bob King and Ryan Cook. Okay, that's just something I like to do. Um, the hair, I think you got to look because you got some messy stuff up here. See that? That's all dirty and messy. 
I could kind of make some of the hair come out like this. I kind of like this square look here. It kind of looks like a coffin. But um, the eyes. Oh, boy. I don't know. It seems like whenever I just quickly carve eyes, my eyes look better. But when I try and concentrate and carve nice eyes, they're always look funny. I know so many people are stressed out. Not stressed out, but they're just... I'm not going to lie, your eyes will make or break your peace. That's why on most of my Dremel carvings, I don't even carve real eyes. I just carve a haul them out. Wood spirits don't need to have real eyes. That's coming from carving fusion. That's just my opinion. So just try and make, draw them on as equal as you can. I don't know, maybe I should have made these parts bigger. Carve a big round thing in there. Those are pretty narrow. This is hard to do because I'm I, I can't be center. I'm just going to carve it. So, so what you want to do. Is this filming? You want to make it look like. So I'm going to carve around these, these circles. Okay. I'm going to carve deep in there. Then I'm going to feather out the wood around here. And, and not touch those circles in there. Then I feather out the wood around here. Taper it so it's slope, slope like that. Same with up here. And all around it. Right. Slope it down remove the wood. I don't have the proper burrs here. That's the problem It's my problem. That I'm, I'm kind of struggling with right now You want it to look like After you get your you got a top eyelid you got a bottom eyelid you want it to look like your eyes in there So this is my bottom eyelid top eyelid. You want to make it look like your eyeballs nice and round in there Bottom eyelid top eyelid but right now, we just want to create that curve. That We want to create that bend in there, like a like the ball sticking out of the, the th socket. Does that make sense to you? I got to stand back and look at this, see how I can see if I'm going to follow these lines. And this is when you really want to take your time if you want to get good at eyes. I, I don't do very good eyes. Is so when you really want to take your time. I'm not going to be able to talk much. So, but I'm running a Dremel 4300. This is the only burr that I got to use right here right now. I wish I had a cut saw burr, a taper burr. But this is one of those cheap aluminum cutters. All right, the Dremel 43, uh, 4300. All I'm going to do is cut, dig inside there and cut that. It's like a knife start cut, you know, you just do one cut. Then I'll then I got a taper burr here. A cuts all taper burr somewhere. Then I'm gonna get the taper burr and then taper all the way and then make it so it looks like this is sticking off and remove the wood all around it. It's hard to explain. Um, stand by. I'll show best on video. This is the hardest part to do. <laughs>
Okay. So there's that cut. I can see this one's bigger than this one. So let's see here. I don't know if you guys can see it. No eyes are really like, um, when I had my injury, I had something called uh, Bell's palsy. So one of my eyes is uh, lower than my other eye. But it's natural. Like, not everybody's eyes are perfect. That's my excuse. <laughs> okay, so here's the cut saw tape. I think this is the gold one. Man, this is not the right burr I need right now, but this is all I got. So um, I'm just going to remove the wood. Leave this blocky, right? And I'll try and make this one a bit smaller. But remove the wood and slope it down. Then you have to go up here and then remove that wood up there too. And make it all sloped around that. Make that pop out. Oh boy. Okay, now I'm going to make those part inside here around. I'm going to, I'm going to clean up this bottom lip while I remember. Thank <laughs> you. 
just went out uh oh what we got power again okay so remember what I said earlier the deeper you got your carving in there the harder it is to get in there with your tool so that I'm good enough that's good enough for me they're not perfect and like I said, I don't have the proper burrs here to do these eyes the way I, really good the way I want. Well, the best I can. So let's see here. I got a pen. I don't know if I want to mark on with the pen. Um, Brant's text. His, I forget the name of his channel, but he does really awesome eyes. I want this guy to look squeak, uh, squinted. He said the most problems people have with eyes is the top eyelid should have the, the roundness to it and the bottom should be somewhat flat. Now, I think I'm going to use this burr again just to kind of, I'm going to go straight, I'm going to do a line straight across first because that makes it looks like he's really squinted. The struggle's real. You know, I'm happy with this carving so far. I don't want to screw it up. But don't forget, if you screw it up with um, bad eyes, you can always just carve the eyes out. Don't stress it. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. And everybody can do this. Drop the microphone. Microphone check. Drop the microphone. Can you hear me? Then this guy's just cooked out of his mind. He's got big eyes like that Asian lady, I said. So now what you now if you want to do it, you can um take these down. You know, make the take the bottom eyelids down more, but. I'm going to do that off screen because, well, I'm just going to slowly work the tool and I'm going to be getting in front of the camera a lot. So, look at that guy. He's just ripped out of his mind. So, that's the way the eyes turned out. Yeah, just ripped out of his mind. He's got big egg eyes. Man, it must have been that Chinese lady's, um, that Asian lady's uh, eyes that uh, stuck out to me. I don't know. So, now we can try and make these eyes better. There's two ways to do this. Well, look at this. Now I see something. So look at the depth here. Look at from here to my where my thumbs and this depth. So this eye has been pushed back deeper. Doesn't matter. That's what I say when uh that's my excuse. It doesn't matter. So there's two ways to do this because we wanna we wanna Give some age lines under here and stuff like that, right? And probably maybe even on these eyelids we can. 
you can use that bit that Ryan Cook uses. Lots of people actually ask me about it. Where is it? It's the Dremel. This Okay, get a pen and paper. This is the bit that burns the wood at the same time. This is the Dremel 125 bit. You, I think you buy these and you get two of them. It carves the wood and burns it at the same time. But I don't, sometimes I think that effect looks a little bit cartoony. Not the way Ryan does it, but the way I do it. So I just got this uh, cheap Chinese cutter again in here. And I'm going to go along and just kind of like, give it some age lines under here. I'm not going to, and I'm also going to give it eyebrows too with this bit. And then age lines up here. I'm not going to film though because I want to be pretty center of the piece. So, anyways. Okay, so remember I told you guys about that Dremel bit that burns and carves at the same time? I call it the Ryan Cook Special. your pieces all right so that's how that bit works i like it you see how i did that on those eyes i just did one cut straight across then you work off that right so for all you people that struggle with eyes like these aren't that great but they're squinted just do one cut straight across then do a job job and then you give it that bird's feet whatever they're called so like if you look under here it's pretty messy Right? Because somebody might have this where they, whoever buys this, sit and look at like that. Well, it looks like hair, but I think I want to kind of just, let's get a pen here. I'm sorry. I think I just want to put a couple strands of hair coming out like that. I think it just needs like something like that. So let me get the saw out and then we might burn it a little bit. Got stuff in there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay, so wood burning. Uh oh. You guys want to know how many pieces I've ruined with wood burning? Burning too much? I'm known for burning my pieces too much. I don't want to burn this too much. It's a propane torch, coolest lighter in the world. Lighter case, anyways. Burn deep in here. Enough, Jordy, don't kill it.
That's it. Oops. All right. What do you guys think? So let's move it over here. Ugh. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, it is. It is wet cedar. See what? See how you burn in there? That's kind of a bad cut. Who cares? So you burn in there, you carve deep in there. When you burn it, it stays dark. Good enough. I'm happy with it. I like it. I hope some of you have learned from this. You can all, I learned these from Sticks and Stones, Kevin, too. Those lines down there. Uh, just carve Rob's side view. Boom. Look how far that nose sticks off the face. That was our goal. So it's good. This is not a cheap carving, I tell you right now. Some people ask me how much I charge for my wood spirits. Well, I charge, well, anywhere from, I don't want to say what I charge, but you guys can charge what you want. So this guy is going to, I like having friends in my shop. So this guy is going to go uh, right here. So when I open my shop up, He's the first friend I see. He says hello to me when I show up. And um, now what I'm going to do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to put this on the jaw horse and carve a quick time-lapse wood spirit. And just show you guys. Just have fun. That's what it's about is just like... Um, you know, just have fun. That's the most important part. So I'll probably do this in probably half an hour, this one. And I'm just going to blast it off and just get her done. Probably won't have real eyes. Don't care. Oh, there's no back on this. So I carved this one with, it wasn't a full battery. So I think I carved this with uh, basically one battery was it a full battery? Actually, I swapped. Yeah, it was. So I carved this one with a battery and a quarter, of, a quarter, and I cleaned up the face of this one before I carved it with this. So I still got two bars left on this battery. Chris, this was the first time I really got the chance to really use this saw. And, uh, man, I love it. It rips. I'm not sponsored by Still. But Still knows who I am. All, lots of the companies know who I am and I might not be their I might not be their biggest um well they might not be a, a big fan of carving fusion because I don't give a shit I just do what I want I say what I want I don't uh, want any sponsorships first of all I don't think I'm good enough second of all my videos are too hacked third of all I don't want it because I can't I can't give my honest opinion of things and I can't show different tools and stuff like that Whoever gets it, good for them. It's awesome. Like, but I don't think it's for me. Like, I'm a cuts all affiliate. That's about it. Um, so there's a couple wood spirits. I'm a little bit tired now. I'm supposed to carve some trees today, but uh, that didn't happen. Guess I'll have to come back tomorrow and carve the trees. But um, this one's a perfect example. I cart actually. This was beautiful cedar. There was some purple color in there. First time I've ever seen it in cedar. But um, just want to show everybody, that's why I carved this one so different. 
your wood spirits do not have to have real eyes. You can hollow out the eyes. Don't stress about the eyes. Eyes are hard to do. Eyes are hard to do for me. Noses, I can do, I can do them fairly simple now. But eyes are, eyes are, is when you, I didn't have the proper burrs. That's my excuse. But it's when you really need to slow down, stop, and take your time. Use diamond burrs and nice burrs that slowly remove the wood. Don't be a Jordy. Like, don't, you guys saw how I did that. Take your time. Um, the Christmas challenge, I, I'm waiting for one more thing this big to finish the video, the grand finale. I got all the lights in. The, you guys saw the videos. I got the snow in. Um, I will be making a post calling all pictures for the Christmas challenge, and um, I'll post it on YouTube, and then I'll post it on Facebook on the group Carving Fusion World, the Wood Carvers Original, um, Chain Carving Fusion. Cha we have three groups. There's Carving Fusion World, the Wood Carvers Original. I'm not an admin in that group. I'm not in it too often because I just can't handle big groups. We have Carving uh, Chainsaw Carving of Fusion. I'm an admin of that. Steven Kenzor is an admin of that. Professional Chainsaw Carving has been doing it for a long time. Anybody has any serious questions, I set, I refer them to Steve. Um, Robbie Woolner is an admin of that group. And then I have uh, Carving Fusion members. And uh, that's just me, and that's a small group. Like I used to, it used to be, you have to be a member for um, a, a YouTube member to be along to that group. But um, I'm slowly letting people in, but it's getting a little bit too big for me now. So, anyways, enough of that. Just show you guys, have fun, have a good time. And what's the saying? Where did I get these two pieces of wood from? Where did I get these two pieces from? The, from the beach. Free wood's the best wood. If, if you if you go by the general rule. Free wood's the best wood. Sometimes it's not the best, but it's the best because it's free. So these these two pieces are 100% profit. That's what I mean. Free wood's the best wood, especially when you're learning. Carve anything. Oh, my phone's going to die.